funky. I would love to. Are you, yeah. are you gonna hook us up? <laughs> We'd love to, uh, yeah, eventually, but I think, uh, I don't know uh, if people even know us here. Yeah, I want to, I like to uh, rock shows out here, but I want to build a small, you know, I like to introduce, like, Club City, and eventually, maybe, uh, you know, rock that, uh, so you should <laughs> I'll pick A45 Heaven. It's a song that uh, that I wrote for my uh, granny. I was raised by my grandma. When she passed away, I was working on my seventh album. Because I was working on my album, I didn't get to visit her often. And the day I was done with the album, she passed. So, you know, it's a song about her and, and Came my single. Originally it was a party song and it was, you know, and, and it's not just for my grandma, it's just a song that represents who I am at the same time. I think that's the moment that I sort of changed my musical style and creative process. In the beginning I was more into like, you know, just living up to the image, you know, the street credibility. I don't know if I have that or not, but you know, just hip hop rebelling without cause. Now it's about message. And it's about me, it's about, um, you know, songs that they could uplift people. Not in the corny sense, you know, I'm not here to like save anybody, but yeah, so to me, 845 is something that represents me and I would like uh, my new fans, hopefully, to get to know that song. Uh, I would choose Come and Hang Book. Uh, translated to uh, Black Happiness. Uh, I think it's a song that best represents who I am uh, as a person and musically it is what I'm into. Which is, it's a mix between soulful music and hip hop. Uh, it speaks about who I am, uh, my dad, my dad, my mom's Korean, how I was raised. Uh, it's just a song that you can really get to know who I am as a person. I mean, obviously, you won't know. All about me, but you get the gist of it. It's a very, yeah, a very honest uh, song. So I think that song would probably best represent me. I'll go for the. There's a song called "I'm um, Busy Tiger Yumiwe." Now I'm proud to single, and we got the uh, got the best cook ever. Just to keep pursuing it. I mean, everything, I, I can't really give a, a really good answer per se. I think everything's going to sound really cliche. But if it's something that you really, really want, it's just to not give up. I mean, it's a really, really hard industry to be in. You have to have thick skin. Um, you're going to hear a lot of things that you don't want to hear. People are going to think that they know you when they really don't. Um, because perception means a lot. So you just have to be really aware and conscious of the things that you do and really be, try not to sound cliche, but really be true to yourself. And um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of failures along with success, but it's how you handle those failures. So I, I think persistence is key. So, yeah, I mean, anything's possible. For me, uh, any new situation was uh, difficult, but I like exploring things and experiencing things. So, you know, I ran into a lot of trouble, but I loved it. That's just who I am. And just learning the craft, I have to unlearn and relearn, you know, I have to make Korean words make sense when it comes to uh, writing in a rap form. That took me a lot because I was getting a lot of criticism, you know. Not really an MC who can't write in Korean, so I actually went to the library and I studied for two years, just learning new words, uh, playing with cadences and alliteration, which uh, messed me up. So I'm not good at neither language. <laughs> but yeah, that. Yeah, people think that I just come out and be wild and this and that, but I actually really took it seriously and mastered my craft. Now you know to me, stay in my life. Tasha was born with something, you know, 
that I hate about her. You know what I mean? She, she, she was born with a you know, mic in her hand. She was ah! You know what I mean? She was really good. I'm not joking. She's, she doesn't practice. I practice, I practice. When we record, she goes in, knocks it out, she comes out, and it's good. So me and Dizzy try to act like we cool. We do the same thing, and when she goes home, we change her, we fix her. <laughs> so I hate her. We love her. Uh, it's something that uh, actually started out with JK when he was a... Uh... Oh, yeah. Wonderland. He started... was born in Wonderland. He was born in Wonderland. Yeah. Um, between an interaction with uh, different fans, mm -hmm. uh, with different groups of fans, not just uh, fans of Busy or fans of Mine or fans of Dude. I think fans from different groups. No, uh, my fans. That's what I'm saying, except yeah. My fans. Everybody's fans except for us basically came together and it, it was uh, it started off as kind of like a little joke and it kind of, and it stuck. It's a joke that stuck and it, it means my fans better than yours. Um, because everybody's very territorial of their unnees or upas. So we decided to run with it. When we formed this project group we were decide, trying to decide what name we should go with and because MFBTY became so popular and we loved the idea and the meaning behind it. Just decided to go with it, and it stuck. Like I said in the beginning, it's a joke that kind of just stuck. I love uh, Bad Booty. You know, it stands for Miss Bad Booty. It stands for uh, now Mother Effin Busy Tiger. You can write <laughs> my fans better than yours. Look at this. It's fun. You know, it's not. We're not uh, clowning, making fun of people or anything like that. We're actually making fun of ourselves, and and we get to with this name do stuff that we normally don't. You know what I mean? We get to have fun and experiment and stuff like that. So, as you can see, we're happy. For me, it is uh, Tasha. Yes. Tasha, Tasha is future. Yeah. Oh, because my name means future in Korean? That too. That makes sense. It is true. It is true. And Toki. Tokyo is feature of hip hop, and but he ain't got nothing on uh, uh, Jordan. Jordan's gotta be the feature of uh, hip hop, Korean. Jordan, my son. Uh, yes. yeah, he's, he's better than everybody. Am I B? Am I B? He's different, Jordan. No, actually, they're all pretty good these days. Before it used to be, I'm not gonna lie. They dance, they sing, and then they come out. They say something that I don't understand, check it out. Uh -huh. You know? But now, they step up the game, and actually, they're all good. You know what I mean? So, just because they don't have all the hits, you know what I mean? So, just because they don't have lots of part in their songs, you don't mean that they, when you meet them in person, actually, they're all MCs at heart, and they want to come out with a solo album, stuff like that, and they're all good. So. Sims is really good, you know Sims? From MIB to Tall Dude, he's still growing. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say Benji. Benjino. Benjino is good, but he's at, she's asking from either group. Like, yeah. Benjino is good, Tokyo is good. Uh, Jay Parks actually yeah, Jay is a Park. good singer, but he's a good rapper, you know? Mm -hmm. too. And you know, he's all my friends. T.O.P. is uh, incredibly handsome. And sometimes I feel, I feel, I catch myself falling in love with him, you know? But I like his voice. I like his voice. Ah, uh, uh, really? But G Dragon started when Toki started, like AI. So actually, uh, they're actually a better rapper, I think. T.O.P. got good vocals, voice, voice, and look. Yeah. Feels good. I, I think Minji's cute too. I think she's she's got a cute voice. She raps. Yeah. She raps. No, they both rap. They 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 split up. I like Poem. Well, Poem's that's my boo. Like she's a real she's Feels good. She's a sweet pie. Feels right. Um, I would actually uh, no disrespect to uh, JYP, but I I love Yuri's voice. I would love to see her um, do 
to dabble in a couple of different other styles. I think she would be really, really, really dope. She has great voice. Great voice. And if JYP leaves her alone and let me write her <laughs> she will be a, the best rapper in the world. She needs to let her just do her thing and, and let me write. You know what I mean? Me and JYP cool for you. I think we'll get a better idea uh, after tonight, after the after the show. Uh, like like we said in the beginning, it, it's just a project group, uh, an excuse for us to do the music that we normally wouldn't do on our solo project. Um, each of, one of us has like a different character when we when the three of us are on stage as opposed to when we're doing solo. So like even I don't know if you seen inter interviews of us when we're when we were doing solos but for some odd reason when the three of us get together we become different people so the people that you see when we're performing by ourselves we're like more reserved and we answer questions more frequently but for some reason when the three of us are together nobody really understands what we're saying we don't know what we're saying and that's kind of like how our music is we're very carefree and just whatever feels good to us. It's not like, okay, this is what's going on right now, so let's do this kind of music. So, you know, it would be really, really great if everybody fell in love with it and it became like the next big sensation, but I, I really don't know. Like we said, we didn't have any plans or anything to make it really big. It was just for the fans and for us to just, you know, become kids again and live in this wonderland and, and be stupid and be crazy and just do music. So. I get, yeah, we'll see tonight how people accept it, and if the reception is good, then yeah, maybe we might have a chance. And that's it. Let me add this: um, "Sweet Dream" wasn't really our single. People don't know this. It was actually for this huge uh, project called Screen X. Well, uh, it's a movie theater. They came out with a new technology. It's a long story, and it was actually like a soundtrack to their video. We had a different single, and we have a two full-length album. And this isn't really our single, but it was kind of forced by accident. We were uh, forced to drop this as a single for that project. So look out for a real thing, and not that this ain't real, but what's real. Chimapel, is it me? It took French for three years in this all in there. She's a television. I was watching too much television. <laughs> well, we got this question earlier if uh, we were ever interested in doing a showcase in France. Uh, we're so happy to be here. Like I said earlier, hopefully tonight our show will go well and we'll get more fans so that we'll be able to come back and do a show showcase for you guys. Hopefully that will turn into a big concert. Um, we love all of you. Uh, hopefully we'll get some more new fans today. Uh, and thank you so much for taking the time out to interview us and thank you for showing interest in us. And that's Wow. The takeover. Happy New Year, happy uh, 2013. And uh, you know, we're not here to make uh, money or nothing like that. You know, we don't really care. If I blow up off of me then we're not. We, I like experiencing new things. And it's crazy that I'm finally here talking to you. Just tweeting and stuff like that, but I'm seeing a person in person talking. It's great. We in France. Seeing a person in person. You know, be true to yourself, be happy and you know, don't give up about nothing and but respect one another, let's love each other and you know make lots of babies. <laughs> so be that kind of thing. So be phones? So say two. So be trigger.